right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Alex Rossman, who is in a wet and windy port of Oregon. How are you doing, Ross? Alex. What's up, John? I am jealous of you in San Diego. Let's just start there. Yeah. And Alex is the president at uh, Rossman Media, uh, uh, one of the top uh, social media agencies in the country. And that's what we wanted to talk about today is is kind of, uh, you know, this is a good point where, you know, we're we're coming to the end of April, sort of coming up to the mid-year mark of the year. What's the state of social media today? Because like, there's been a lot, of, obviously there was a lot of stuff around TikTok and up on the hill and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so just kind of give me a, a state of play of social media today. Just like always, it's it's moving at hyper speed. It's um, always changing. And so I think that's the uh, exciting part about my job and our team's job is staying ahead of that. Um, you know, right now the TikTok ban is is really top of mind for a lot of people. Um, it, you know, it quickly garnered a lot of momentum throughout the pandemic, and really became the the leading social media platform, particularly for just consumers, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, with that, you know, a lot of people have migrated from channels like Meta and others over to TikTok because it's very relatable, user-generated type content. But now we're seeing obviously the stir up of all of that. And I think the um, big topic of conversation is, you know, where do we go if that does happen? And as a business, where where do we go and, and what are the options for us, right? So we see a we've seen a lot of consumer brands focus a lot of their attention on advertising on TikTok, creating content, working with influencers, and have really seen major growth. And it's mainly just with any other new social media platform. It's the Wild West, right? There's mm -hmm. just try things, see if it works, and you double down on what does work. And so now, you know, the topic is: is it going to be banned? Is it not? Um, already seeing states start to ban it. Um, and so, you know, again, I think the focus for businesses right now should be video first content. Doesn't matter if it's TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, there is and has been really a push towards digestible short form content at scale. So mm -hmm. that's the topic of conversation we're seeing a lot right now is, is how to navigate TikTok and how do you set your business up for success uh, through video content. And here's a, it's a, here's a really interesting one, um, Alex, and I'll even use um, from our, our own our own examples. Um, I, some of the, the short videos, the shorts that we put on YouTube, and then we use the same shorts sometimes like with Instagram for, for Reels, or, or we use it for TikTok. Yeah. Amazing, like there'll be a short that will do really well on YouTube and horribly on TikTok and vice versa. Um, and it's and it's not always obvious to people why that's the case. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it, you know, I think what it comes down to is you just have to try new things and and there's no real math to it other than volume, right? The more you can create content like this and and get it out, you know, the more likely you are to have some sort of viral moment or, you know, pick up some speed. And so I think if you can really cross pollinate all social platforms with content, you're setting yourself up for success. And I think those that focus too much on one platform uh, can really be volatile. So our stance has always been try to have an omni-channel approach where you're creating content, it's going on YouTube, it's going on TikTok, it's going on Instagram, it's going on LinkedIn. And in doing that, you cast that net much wider. Right. And then from a point of view of when you work with companies, like getting getting their voice correct, because what I'm seeing a lot now is I'm seeing them yeah. schizophrenic companies, right? When you go to their corporate website and all of that, and it projects one image, then you see them pop up on YouTube, and maybe it's another one. Then you go right. pop up on Instagram, and it's completely different. And it and, and so there seems to be like almost this schizophrenia that's taken <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know, authenticity more than ever before is so critical. You know, people see right through it. I mean, it's just, there's no way around it. Right. So if your message is one way on the website and then you're on social media talking about a completely other topic, 
people get confused and they, they quite frankly, they get just turned off. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think somebody that can stay consistent in their message, they can be wholeheartedly authentic and really speak to their audience versus, Hey, here's my message, you know, push it on to you, take it, receive it versus let's have a conversation. Let's really get a, the point across of authenticity and really who you are to the core. And I always say that people buy from people. Sure. So it doesn't matter if it's a product or a service. At the end of the day, people want to know the story. People want to know, like you said, the message, the mission. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it is really, really important to be as authentic and to yourself as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, if, if people see you as a very safe, secure company, maybe a little conservative, but that's what they like. Yeah. About and then you show up wacky somewhere, there's a disconnect. <laughs> it's, and you like yeah. your point about your customers, your customers saying, I'm not looking for wacky. I'm looking for safe and secure. For sure. Yeah. And it depends, you know, on, on the brand, like you said, it's, and that goes, right back to the very beginning of like, what is your brand identity? Yeah. Like, you know, and once you've nailed that, you've got to, you got to stick with it, you know? Cause like you said, it's, it's, if you're throwing a curveball at your audience and they're not expecting it, uh, it can go terribly wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, we talked about the, the issues with TikTok. Um, what, what do you see about the other platforms? What, 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 uh, evolutions or initiatives are on, or do you see any one of them, sort of uh, bringing anything out that's going to push them ahead of the others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think there's there's a lot of differentiators, but I think there's also a lot of similarities, right? So, you know, one falls off, the other one's going to take the lead. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're kind of adapting to really the behaviors of the consumers, right? So where are people spending most of their time? What type of content are they consuming? Um, I would just say the reality is people love video content. It's the most mm -hmm. engaging. It performs 80% better than static image. So I think no matter what you do, the importance is to have video as a part of your, your strategy. It doesn't matter if it's on Instagram. Instagram has now, as we all know, over the last many years, moved from a photo platform to a video platform predominantly yep. with Instagram Reels. Um, so focusing in on where the platforms are going and tailoring that content strategy to them. YouTube has also followed suit with, mm -hmm. you know, YouTube shorts, right? So people are going to YouTube for also long form content. If you're a vlogger, great opportunity to get your message out there and really show your life in a long format. Yeah. And then you can also break it down into 30 second pieces that are digestible and can get, uh, get the point across. Yeah, no, I, I I agree, and I and I think one of the other one of the other really interesting things I think that's happening right now is that I mean, number one, I agree with you, and people are st starting to figure out different platforms for different different things, but now we have AI come into the mix, right? Which is you know talk about yeah. Wild West. I mean, uh, now it's I don't know what what's wilder than the Wild West and the Wilder West. Uh, <laughs> so, so now we have AI coming in. There's two parts of that. Number one, to your point, I mean, about video content, it's making that a lot easier to create and, yeah. and it's making a lot easier to create content once and, and, uh, and use mm -hmm. multiple times. But what impact do you see AI up out there? And people aren't really sure what's, what's really more and what's just hype. AI is going to, and already has transformed the way marketing is going to operate, um, you know, in, in many formats, right? AI right now is used as a tool to generate ideas at scale. So mm -hmm. from a social media perspective, how it could, you know, really apply to our work is coming up with topics, right? Which AI can go identify relevant, you know, trending topics online and spew out, you know, hundreds or thousands of topics, uh, you know, within milliseconds, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of opportunity to leverage AI as a tool. Um, what I will say is it's, I do believe it's going to take a while for it to truly take over and be a substitute for, you know, human behavior and things like that. I think it still has a ways to go, but absolutely great for a tool to streamline processes, to automate processes. Um, but it is scary when I just saw a video, uh, somebody saying that, you know, AI was able to make a decision and actually lie to its end user, which was again, kind of interesting to see that it, it's starting to adapt and, and, you know, make its own behavioral decisions. 
Um, <laughs> so that's obviously the, the scary part of AI, but ultimately I think a great tool and we're starting to see it really come to fruition right now. Yeah, I think one of the dangers, is the, the, one of the traps people can fall into is that obviously uh, Google and a lot of the others are starting to build their algorithms to figure out whether you're generating really original content or whether it's all AI generated. So right. That's, people just need to be a little bit cognizant of of that and use it use it well. Um, what other what other initiatives or, or things do you see on the horizon like AI? I mean, obviously AI is a big one. Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be, um, you know, other than AI, I think there's going to be kind of a return back to what we saw in like 90s, 1990s type marketing, which is very much um, bringing back, focusing in on brand, focusing in on connection, focusing in on, you know, things that are not just what I would consider more commoditized type marketing. I think there's going to be more brand storytelling, you know, things like that. Again, that's more, you know, where I see the vision of marketing in general and advertising. Um, but again, that's more so if you're looking at, okay, AI is a tool, but marketing wise, we're going to see a big shift in terms of how brands are marketing their product and service because they have to adapt to really the platforms, you know, that are ever changing. Yeah, and and uh, and and I think uh, and and I think part of that too is is part of that adapting is they're going to have to adapt their own you know internal processes and and stuff to that to make them a lot more nimble. Because I think here's another challenge. Yeah. The degree is everything is getting so specific nowadays. It's like you know you once upon a time you could hire a marketing generalist, right? And you could say okay, yeah. a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of the other. You can't do that anymore. I mean, you yeah. can hire somebody and say, do you do a bit of SEO and then you can do a bit of this? Or I mean, because SEO alone is a full-time job. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's, um, you know, I, I think, again, it's like you've got to have the right tools for each strategy. And there's so many strategies now, right? There's the SEO component, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, which is, you know, try to show up on Google as, as much as you can. Then you've got the social, which is be as relevant mm -hmm. and in your face as you can. You've got email, which is geared towards lifecycle marketing and sticking with, you know, customers after a sale. So every component of marketing really plays a very significant role. And I think, again, going back to, you know, my initial conversation of, yeah. hey, like you can't rely on one, right? Because we're seeing the volatility right now, even just with TikTok, it's, it can be problematic. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And the one thing that you touched on there a moment ago about marketing is, you know, getting back to some fundamentals, but I think yeah. absolutely bringing the the human and the person back sent. You mentioned about authenticity earlier, and, and and I know there's a lot of people talking about authenticity, but authenticity at the end of the day is really being who you really are. So it, yeah company being being true to who you are as a brand and and but i see that a lot more now is that people are craving as much as ai as much as all the technology people are still craving more of a of a real human connection particularly after the pandemic 100 percent. everybody wants the realness shown through a brand right they don't want to be fed something that you know looks fake that looks like it's overproduced what people want is the story. People want to know the message behind it. People are becoming very conscious consumers, right? You look at everybody walking through the aisle, you know, they go through a grocery store. The first thing they're doing is they're flipping the back of the label, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're looking at the ingredients, yep. looking at the story. And that's only one, you know, that's one situation, right? So I think, yes, 100% people buy from people. You know, people want to know the story. Um, and you know, again, we've been fed, we went through a period with marketing and advertising, which it, it was very much product, 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 shove it down your face, sales funnel, sales funnel, sales funnel, click this, click that. Now it's more so it's, we're seeing also a return back to, you know, people need to see your product or service seven times before they make an actual buying decision. So it's really important just to be visible like you do, which I think this is a great platform continue to talk with people, continue to get your message out there and do it on an ongoing basis, you know? And I think, again, you start to really develop a cult following. Yeah. 
Yeah, and and part of that was uh, exactly what you pointed out there is, you know, today, particularly if you're in B2B selling today, you're not normally selling to one person anyway. You're selling to a bunch of people or a a group of people. And therefore, your your marketing has to take that into account. You're not marketing to one person. You're marketing to got very specific, um, you know, requirements. Yeah, you are. You have to know your audience, right? I think Mm -hmm. that's the best thing you just said is, if once you know your audience, you you know what type of content is going to resonate. And again, it goes back to you're going to attract the audience that, you know, is right for you, because if you're authentic, you know, at the core, the audience is going to follow. Right. So then it's just really about doubling down on the content, understanding your audience, knowing really what type of content they're going to resonate with. Um, And again, it goes beyond content. It goes back to, you know, how you're positioning the product, you know, what type of new products do you need to make to serve that audience? Um, so again, there it's knowing your audience and then really, again, being authentic in the messaging is just absolutely critical. Yeah, no, I, 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 I totally, I totally agree. And, and it's just, and it's the experience then, I mean, cause then the experience of when somebody actually does connect with the company, it needs to, yeah. it, to be consistent with whatever they saw originally, whether it was on social media or whatever, if they got a really good feeling from some of the content they've seen on social media and they're interacting it, and then they reach out to the company or they connect or whatever, and they get a different experience. I mean, you've really just lost big time. So and I yeah. think another challenge is replicate the or have a consistent customer experience across the every interaction. I couldn't agree more with that. The customer experience is so critical. You look at Amazon again, I, I use them as an example because the truth is the reason people flock to Amazon is the buyer experience. They can trust that prime is pretty much always going to deliver, right? <laughs> Meaning that if it's same day, you're going to get it same day. If it's next day, you're going to get it next day. It, it's a very consistent experience, right? Yeah. And even now we're seeing that if somebody sees, let's say an ad on Instagram, the first thing they're going to do instead of buying through that brand's website, they're going to see if it's on Amazon Mm -hmm. because they know that that delivery is going to be consistent and and reliable. So I couldn't agree more that the customer experience, and again, that's only one example, but um, you know, it's, it's so important. And I think the other part too, then is you probably agree is having plenty of validation points because, you know, obviously up to now, like reviews and stuff have been really important. I think people are somewhat skeptical because there's been so much like review spamming and all of that and and manipulation of stuff. Um, But you do have to have some validation points so that people, even if they're not engaging with you directly, they can at least see, okay, okay, I can see what they've done for other people. You want your customers to be your hype men, right? You want your customers to be the ones that go out and and spread the, you know, spread the news on, on the, on your product or service. You know, we have a client, uh, bug bite thing that was on shark tank, you know, Mm -hmm. funny name, but a very great product that serves a very large audience, particularly now as the seasons are changing. Mm -hmm. But I say this because it's such a simple product, right? It, It helps you know, alleviate itching after you get bit by a bug, right? It's very simple, but the message is so clear that it's there to help people. It's there for mothers when they have kids that, you know, they get bit alive and they need support. And what's great about them, and I I just throw them out there because they've just dialed this in so well, is that that customer experience is so consistent. You know, they've built such a great brand recognition, recognition through that authenticity and again, you know, you people buy from people. This product was built based off of a need that the owner had, right? She was in this situation. She knew she needed to solve a problem. She solved it, created a product, and then really connected well with the audience. And her customers are her biggest advocates, right? That those single-handedly, those customers are the ones that are spreading, you know, the news and, and continuing to help expand the company. Yeah, and and I think that's a great example. And I also think that people just want things to do what they say they'll do. <laughs> to be this, there used to be this ad campaign in the UK, like when we were growing up, because we got the UK on, on the Irish, we got the UK station too. And it was for, um, it was for treatment that you put on wood fences, right? It was called Ron Seal. And the ad literally was a guy, you know, had painted the stuff and it was raining by his fence and he just had the tin and he goes, Ron Seal, it does exactly what it says on the tin. And everybody remembers that ad. 
A hundred percent. And that's another really great example. It's if they get the product, it serves exactly the uh, problem that they're looking to, to solve. You have a repeat customer for life. Yeah. And it's just so important. Like you said, if it, if you say it through advertising and the product comes and it's not the, that way, that's obviously where, you know, brands really fall short. And like you said, you start to see inauthentic reviews and, uh, you know, things of that nature, but you're so right. It's, it's really important that, you know, the product is really good. And, um, you know, again, it solves, solves the problem. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Alex, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your insights today. All of Alex's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Rust Media. Will do. Thanks, John. Appreciate you having me. So I am Alex Rossman, the CEO of Rossman Media. You can check us out at rossmanmedia.com. We are a social media agency that serves really brands of all sizes, offering social media management, paid media, influencer marketing, and creative. Excellent. Uh, well, listen, Ben, Alex, thank you for today. Thank you all for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Yeah.